Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Bradley United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Steve McPeak. I'm the pastor here, and if you're worshiping with us for the first time, I'd like to say welcome and glad to have you with us this morning. Also, uh, if you could go ahead and sign in with the pew pads that are in the, the pews, uh, put your name down so we can have a record of your being with us and then just pass those along so everybody can have an opportunity to sign in. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, those of you who are watching online, uh, if you also would click on the, uh, there's a tab on the, in the comments section that will take a link that will take you to where you can sign in as well. Uh, we'd appreciate you signing in. And then if there's more than one person watching with you, if you could just put down the number of people that are there uh, in the comments section watching with you, we'd greatly appreciate that as well. Also, I just have a reminder that the rest of the announcements are on the back of the bulletin. It fell off of my, the podium here. Uh, but if you look at the back of the, of the, uh, the uh, bulletin, you'll see that there are several things coming up. Um, just one is uh, the Bradley Pitch-In on Sunday, September 15th. And uh, that'll be after, the, hot, after the, the morning worship. And we just ask that you bring a, a dessert or a side dish. Uh, the meat will be provided. It's going to be chicken, uh, fried and baked. Uh, from uh, Kroger and so if you would just bring something to go along with that uh, we'd greatly appreciate it and we'll have a time of fellowship and uh, down in, in the fellowship area in the basement um, also um, we are um, starting a membership class those of you who are interested in uh, membership and want to learn more or just want to learn more about the church itself uh, you're invited to participate. We're going to have that on Sunday mornings at uh, 8.30 to 9.30 before worship. And so if you'd like to participate in that, you're more than welcome to um, attend. And that's going to be on the second floor in the educational wing uh, area, uh, room 202. So uh, that will start next Sunday. So it, it'll be a three-week, three-Sunday event. So uh, we'll have more uh, out on that, too, as well. So, as we prepare to, to, to worship this morning, let us just uh, take a deep breath, and relax, and just be present to God's Spirit today. Amen. The Gospel of Mark is known as the earliest of the four Gospels. The early church had to wrestle with the issue of how much of Jewish practice was to be required of Gentile Christians. Kosher practices sometimes made it difficult for the table fellowship to happen when both Christian Jews and Christian Gentiles were present. Ritual hand washing shouldn't be separated from the holiness it symbolizes. Keeping religious dietary laws shouldn't be separated from the sense of being set apart to live as God's people. The heart of a person is what really matters. God desires a pure heart. Christ transforms a heart of stone into a heart of flesh that truly reflects the grace and love of God.
eternal God, creator of all life, we give you thanks for the gift of a new day. We come to you ready to be open to your mysteries of grace. We embrace this new day with anticipation of surprising miracles, love to be given, kindness to be shared, and peace to be enjoyed. As we gather for worship, let us receive the blessing of this day with joy and live it in expectation of your glory revealed. Amen.
All right, chill, kids, you ready? <laughs> It's just you and him, huh? Okay. Okay, Ryder. Ryder, what's on your shoe? Your donut? Is your donut on your shoe? Here, come on up here, Ryder. All right, how are you two doing this morning? Good. I like your outfits. Thanks. That's cute. They almost match. Yeah, that way we can tell you apart. Okay, well, have you ever eaten dirt? Have you ever done that that you can remember? Huh? Yes. Have you ever eaten sand? Have you ever been at the beach or something and tried to put sand in your mouth? No. no. That's not good, is it? You think? By some shark or something? Yeah. Well, I remember seeing babies. Um, baby well, sharks no, no, we're not talking about sharks. <laughs> I'm talking about babies, human babies, that were on the beach or in a sandbox or on the ground playing, and they would actually put their hands down in the dirt or in the sand and pick it up and put it in their mouth. <laughs> no, it's not good, is it? It's not yummy. I don't know. It's yeah. I probably did too. I just don't remember because I was a baby. It's not very clean. And Jesus is talking with the Pharisees in, our, in the scripture that we're reading today. And he's talking to them about, uh, and the Pharisees are the rule keepers. Uh, they're the ones that make sure that you do what you're supposed to do. And... Um, they were talking to him about their, his disciples not washing their hands before they ate. And so hopefully you wash your hands before you eat a meal, right? Yeah. Okay. But that's what the, the, that he was talking about was wash your hands before you have a meal uh, so that your hands aren't dirty. Yeah, wash your Yeah, make sure they're clean and that way you don't get it on your food and, and, and eat dirt, right? Okay, well, you know, this, um, if they didn't, they would be considered unclean. If they didn't wash their hands, they were unclean, and they were not able to participate in the community of worship. Or they can't eat it. Right. It, it just, they, 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 it wasn't what they call kosher. It wasn't something that you could do that was, um, it was called unclean. You always have to wash your hands before you eat. Right. Drink. Right. So remember that, okay? Grandma, remember that. See if they do it. Um, but Jesus says, it's not what goes into your mouth that makes you unclean. It is what is in your heart. It's what's inside there. Yeah, that's what matters. That's what's got to be clean. The way you think, how you treat other people, uh, what you say about people, uh, that makes you unclean. That, that, that makes you uh, dirty inside. And we're supposed to treat people with respect. And we're not supposed to, to talk about them, you know, meanly. We're not supposed to call them names. Um, we're not supposed to taunt them, you know. Um, we're supposed to just be nice to people and include them and make friends and be friendly. And so that comes from inside of us. That comes from our heart. Right? Yeah? And so uh, that's, what we, that's what Jesus was talking about. When, when Jesus comes into our heart, Jesus begins to remove all of the dirt that's in our heart so that we can love others and, uh, with, the, with the love of Christ. Okay? And when this change happens, we will want what is best for others and help make it happen. Right? You'll start thinking about other people and trying to be nice and, and, um, and treat them with kindness and gentleness and love. And so we will encourage uh, one another when we have that kind of love. We will not bully other people, right? No bullying. No bullying. 
and, and, or call them stupid or ugly or, or call them any other kinds of names, right? But we'll see the beauty that's inside of them and, and we will encourage them. We want to be nice and do it. Yes. And so that's what we want. We want Jesus to teach us how to do that and um, live that kind of life, a clean life, a loving life. Okay? Let's pray. Jesus, we ask that you come into our hearts and remove the dirt within our hearts so that we will see the beauty of each person and love them with your love. Amen. All right. Now you two go downstairs and practice that with each other, okay? <laughs> who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders, and they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it, and there are so also many other traditions that they observe the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is, as it is written. The, this people honors me with their lips, but, not, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and, told, and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is with, from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Maybe see you. The Lord reigns. He is a mighty God. The Lord God reigns. The Lord reigns. He is a mighty Sing. 
Great is the Lord. Can we give God a hand clap for <laughs> it is mighty indeed? Yeah. Give God a hand clap. Amen. Thank you, Joe, for sharing that special music with us this morning. Um, that spoke to me about how mighty God is and what he will do out of his love for us. Uh, even give his own son to die for our sins. That's mighty. That's powerful. It's awesome. And so I, I think that's just, <laughs> I give praise to God for that this morning. Uh, so I, I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm enjoying this cool off that we're having right now. So the last, this heat wave we had is really worn me out. <laughs> and I don't even go outside. <laughs> no. But uh, no, I, I, I wanted to just to, to lead into the sermon a little bit, uh, just giving God praise. But I also want to know, um, has anybody cooked with the old, um, I forget what it's, it's, uh, the, the, it's stone, it's not stoneware, it's the um, cast iron. Cast iron. It, it cooks well, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and, and my wife had some um, cast iron dishes, pans, and the loving husband that I wanted to be wanted to help clean up. Yeah, I see you shaking your heads out there. You know what's coming, don't you? Well, I get out the soap and the water and the wash towel and I start to clean that dish up. You know, I was like, I was so proud of myself. You know, I had to put it up there, you know, to dry and everything. And, uh, oh, she's in the service this morning. Uh, and uh, so she got home and she's like, did you wash my pan? I was like, yeah. She said, well, how'd you wash it? And I said, well, it was soap and water. I put it in there said, like I do all the other dishes. She says, honey, you're not supposed to wash it like that. You'll ruin it. It'll hold that soap taste in that pan. And I didn't realize that at the time, but there's a special way to clean that pan. You put it on the stove, you put water in it, you, you let it simmer, cook, whatever, and it takes care of it. And Jesus is the way that, he is the special way that cleans our hearts. Jesus comes in. We, we think that these outside traditions that by doing good deeds and doing good things is the proper way to clean up our lives and to clean up our hearts and, and to, to be better. But in all reality, the way to do it is for Christ to enter into our hearts. For when Christ is in there, Christ does the cleaning. Christ removes the dirt and the filth and the grime that has accumulated in our souls and in our hearts and gets rid of it, gets it out of there. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell these Pharisees. It's not by the outward things that we do. It's not those things that make us pure. It's what's inside of us. It's what's in there. If Christ is in there, then we're getting clean. Amen? We're getting purified. We're, we're, we're becoming holy. Because it's through Christ. In our scripture reading this morning, uh, we see a comparison. We see Jesus uh, making a comparison as he responds to the Pharisees. And he compares the traditions of men and the commandments of God. And the external and internal piety. He's making a comparison. The washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles is what Jesus refers to the traditions that do not make a person unclean. So the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands. 
And Jesus responds to their criticism from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He says, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the, com the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. You forget about what God said about loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. You forgot about all that. And now you're nitpicking about somebody not washing their hands before they eat. Jesus says that's not what defiles the person. It's what's in the heart that defiles the person. You need to check yourselves out. You see, up until the time of Jesus, the Israelite people had always been a minority people. Their laws and traditions, their rituals and observances, all served a very important, critical function. To set them apart and keep them from being absorbed into the other cultures that were around them. It kept them distinct from the Amorites and then the Egyptians while they were in slavery. Then the Canaanites, when they entered into the promised land. And in exile, it kept them from, uh, separate from the Babylonians. And then from the occupying armies of the Greeks and the Romans. Leviticus 20, 26 says it all. It says, you shall be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy. And I have separated you from other peoples to be mine. The word holy means to be set apart. And with God, we are set apart to be used for God and his purpose. We are instruments on God's tool belt, you might say, for, to be used for God's purpose in this world. We are set apart. We are holy. Set apart to do God's will in partnership with God. And so the word means set apart. Now there's Sabbath observances, circumcisions, rules concerning food and, and, and uh, food preparation. There are prohibitions against child sacrifice. All these things served as a boundary between them and the more dominant neighbors that prevented them from being contaminated and diluted by other religions. Religions that did not recognize the one true living God. Giving up any of these things was to give up being a Jew. And the Pharisees not only followed the 613 laws of Torah, but they also followed the oral traditions that told how to carry out those 613 laws. And so those were the, the, the Pharisees were those that would interpret what that law meant. And they, they were the ones that told you the interpretation of the law. And so... What constituted work on the Sabbath, they would tell you what that meant. So for them, they told you how far you could walk on the Sabbath and, and so forth. When, we were, uh, when I visited in, in Nazareth, they said that they had poles that marked how far you could walk outside of town before you had to turn around and come back before sunset so that you didn't break the Sabbath law. There was only so far you could go or you were in trouble. You broke the Sabbath law. And so these traditions eventually would be written down and, from, and form, form the basis of what became the Talmud, teaching that also contained instructions about rules related to hand washing, of which the Pharisees addressed Jesus about. 
Now, hand washing. These days, most of us equate hand washing with just basic hygiene, right? <laughs> it's just something you do. You wash your hands before you eat. You wash your hands before you prepare food. But the Pharisees were concerned about, they weren't concerned about germs. They didn't know anything about germs at that time, but about making every part of life holy. Holiness was not just for the temple rituals or sacrifices or for the priests. It was for everyone. So just as the priests washed their hands before sacrifice, in the same way, the common people washed their hands before meals as a sign that they were holy. As was their humble meal and the table fellowship that framed it, all of that. And just as the priests in the temple washed the holy vessels, in the same way the common people were to wash their cups and their pots and their pans as a sign that they too were holy. It was the Pharisees' way of teaching people that God was not just in the temple, but also in your home. Their hope was to make the Torah and the law of Moses accessible to all people. To sanctify all of life. And the problem was they got so focused on the rules and the rituals and the traditions that they forgot the reason for them in the first place. To make people feel closer to God. To help people have a relationship with God. So what does Jesus do when the Pharisees criticize him for not coaching his disciples in the proper hand-washing etiquette? What does he do? He performs an in-your-face reality check, saying in so many words, you accuse us of leading people away from God. You hypocrites. You are the ones who are keeping people away from God. You are the ones who are making people feel inadequate and unloved and excluded. And you are the ones abandoning the very commandment of God for the sake of human tradition. You do just the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing. You hypocrites. You think you are doing what God wants, but guess what? You're doing just the opposite. Jesus' disagreement with the Pharisees over the law and traditions was about their function, not their value. Instead of them using the, these, these rituals and, and, and these uh, laws to welcome home the lost and expand the kingdom of God, the Pharisees were using that, them uh, to persecute the people, to keep them separated and out of the community. They were using them against the people instead of for the people. The Pharisees had mistaken rule keeping for a loving relationship with God and neighbor. But you can't blame them for following tradition. Mm -mm. After all, keeping track of right and wrong, being personally offended and righteously indigent, 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 indigent. I can't even say it, indignant. Is <laughs> much easier than getting your hands dirty, loving the unlovable, and forgiving the unforgiving, unforgivable. It's tough to love those who are hard to love. Right? People that don't like you, that talk about you. It's hard to love them. And so they chose not to by referring to the traditions, by referring to the laws that they had expanded from 10 to 613. That's why Jesus came and said, you know, if you just do these two things, it sums up the whole law and the prophets in all of your oral tradition. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. That sums it up. Do that. 
and you're good. Does that seem like it's too difficult? Some days, yes. Yeah. But that's what Jesus said. You know, there was an article I read titled something like Bad Charities, America's Failures. It listed uh, literally thousands of nonprofits that were about uh, more about lining their pockets of their board members than actually helping real people. And when the investigative in, uh, journalists uh, cornered one of the directors and asked how they could justify such selfish, self-centered behavior, his response was, we started out with a really good idea, helping needy children. But somewhere along the way, I guess we got a little greedy and forgot what we were supposed to be doing. They forgot. We forget too, don't we? We forget what it is that we are supposed to be doing. That we are supposed to be making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are supposed to be gathering together in worship to praise God. And pray together and sing songs of praise. That's our purpose. You know, and like the Pharisees, we can easily, we can be easily offended. We forget that loving God and loving neighbor is all about relationship. And when we get offended, we don't want those relationships. We cut those off. But Jesus reminds them and us, your eyes see only what's on the outside. God sees what's on the inside of a person, what's in their heart. God knows what's inside of us. God knows that. And what's inside of us will come out of us. As Jesus said, Whatever enters the body will go and pass through the body and come out. <laughs> It'll come out later. But what comes out of the heart comes out of the mouth, comes out of our actions. And that's what's offensive. That's what's unclean. That's what needs to be purified, cleaned up, made pure. For the kingdom of God. And so out of the heart comes all of this stuff. Envy. Greed. Licentiveness. Whatever that. I have trouble with some of these big words. Murder. Adultery. All of that comes out of the heart. And Jesus says God knows our heart. That's the important thing. It's not whether or not you eat with unclean, unwashed hands. Can't tell my mother-in-law that. She, you have to wash your hands. <laughs> that's, that's her rule. But that's not the real, that's not the defiling part of it. It is the heart. And our hearts need to be changed. It's from the inside out that we are to live. as holy and separated from the world for the glory of God. It's almost like Jesus saying, wait a minute, you Pharisees, you want to condemn people for this little nitpicky stuff like hand washing? Well, if you want to condemn people, then do it for something that's really evil. And he listed off those sins that I was talking about. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. And then, just to be clear, if there was anyone left standing in the room who said, well, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm, I'm okay. I haven't done any of that stuff yet. Jesus said, and if you do these things in your heart, you're just as guilty. Not even if you haven't acted it out, but even thought about doing it. You're just as guilty. And so he covers everybody that's there. 
So what's the point of our Bible reading for today? Does Jesus want each and every one of us wallowing in a pit of guilt and remorse? No, not at all. His message is a simple one. Do the right thing for the right reasons. Look at the heart. Don't look at the outside. Don't judge, as they used to say, don't judge a book by its cover. Read the pages. See what's inside there. Look at the heart of people. To really know what's going on. We do good. Not so we can look good. But we do good observing and teaching the teachings of Jesus and the word of God so that we can glorify God. You must observe them diligently for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the people. For what other great nation had a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him. That's found in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Our traditions, our rituals, our rules, while all these things help define us, they're not what is most useful. It's not that. It's what helps to bring people to Christ. Our actions, <coughs> our words, how we love people how we relate to others. That's our evangelism. That's what connects people to God. That's how they see God at work in the world and experience God's love and mercy, hope and peace. That's what we're supposed to do. And so our worship and our lives are meant to be open doors so that those on the outside looking in feel drawn towards something bigger and beyond themselves. The living God whose name we bear and whose mark we wear because it's all about relationships. Our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. The good we do, the love and sacrifices we offer, the things we give up for the sake of others, our weaknesses, our sins, our Achilles heels. God can use all of that for God's purposes. We don't have to be perfect, people. Start today. Start now. You don't have to be perfect. God can use us if we allow him to. Just do it. Do the right thing. Make a difference in someone else's life by allowing them to experience the love and the grace of God in their life through interactions with you. Today, Jesus is saying, come, break bread with me. Even if your hands are dirty, come and I will wash your hearts Come and receive and then take what you have received and share it generously. Because there is always more. More than you can ever want. The more you share, the more you will have. It doesn't matter about the rules that you've broken. I've paid the price. Even if you are faithless, I am faithful, says God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You and I sometimes forget that relationship is more important than rules, rituals, and traditions. But the good news is God does not forget. Ever. Because it is all about the relationship. God remembers that we belong to God and promises to hold us tightly in his arms. And to never Never, 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 ever let go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's go to the, uh, to the Lord in prayer this morning. I know we have several people that are needing prayer uh, in our congregation. Their names are listed on the, the bulletin. Uh, but I also want to say that the, uh, we need to be praying for a family in our community who lost someone uh, due to suicide uh, this past week. I uh, got an email from the Ministerial Association, and it was in New Palestine uh, where this took place. And it's a sad situation. So the families hurting, and they need our prayers and our support. And uh, so just keep them in your prayers as well this week. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal and gracious God, we just give you thanks and praise for the many blessings that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here in your house of worship this day. For, Lord, we know that there are some that did not wake up this morning. Some are no longer with us here on this earth. And so, Lord, we pray that you would just be with them, those that are grieving the loss of a loved one this morning. May you comfort them during this time of sorrow and grief. May you hold them up in your right, just right hand. And let them know that you are there carrying them during this difficult time. Lord, we pray for those that have lost homes, or businesses, through the storms, the floods, the earthquakes, the hurricanes, all of the disasters that have entered into the lives of people, Lord, we pray that you would just comfort them right now during this time. We ask for clean hands and, and pure hearts, oh God. Give us lives that are a beautiful reflection of you. Give us hands that work diligently, create beauty, and reach out to love others, oh God. Give us hearts that feel strongly, break for injustice and oppression, and are not afraid to love deeply. Move our feet toward the poor, the weak, the needy. Let our lives be always living to further your kingdom, O oh God, here on earth. We are yours, O oh Lord. Take us and use us. Use us in whatever way you see fit. For we are yours and you are ours. Now let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We will now continue to worship through the giving of God's tithe and our offering this morning. Um, if you're watching online and would like to participate in this part of the worship service, you're invited to do so. Uh, there in the comments section, you can click on a link that will take you to our giving page. And there you can give electronically uh, to the ministries of Bradley United Methodist Church. And if you've already done so, I just want to say thank you for those who, who have given uh, electronically to the ministries of the church here. We appreciate your support in, in uh, the ministries that we are doing here and throughout the world in our community and throughout the world here through Bradley. So if the ushers will come forward at this time. <clears throat>
Please stand. receive what you give with grace. In turn, help us be generous with our monetary gifts, our possessions, our talents, and our time. We ask that you would accept and consecrate all these gifts to further your work in the world. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Praise Have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are a forgiven people. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. God, power, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. In his baptism and in table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death 
and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Here at Bradley United Methodist Church, we have open communion, which means you do not have to be a member of this church to participate in the communion. Everybody is welcome at the table. And the way we will receive communion this morning is we will do it by way of intention. You will receive a piece of bread. You'll take the bread and then dip it into the uh, cup, into the, the juice, and then take both of the elements at the same time. So just hold on to that piece of bread. Once you get it, dip it into the, the juice and then take them both at the same time. And then you can come to the, uh, the front and pray or you can go back to your seats and, and pray if you'd like. Uh, but it's just a time of, of meditation and worship and prayer after you receive as everybody's coming forward. If you cannot come forward, just let us know. Just raise your hand and we will come to you and serve you where you are at. Because we understand not everybody can, can come forward. So just let us know and we will come to you. We'll start at the front of the church. Uh, those of you who are down here in the front, if you'll come first and then the rest can follow behind you. We'll just uh, receive communion that way. Come down the center aisle and then return to your seats through the outer aisles. Will the ushers come forward?
Did everybody get served who wanted to? Did, we don't want to miss anybody. Okay. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the closing hymn.
He's taking his time. Okay. You gonna join us? No. You ready? Yeah. Okay, repeat after me. Be- <laughs> Beloveds of Bradley. Beloveds of Bradley. Go forth with a renewed heart. Washed in the living water of Christ. Holy and pure. For the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Pouring be with you now and always. Amen.